what's up people it's that guy supreme decision i'm actually here in georgia and i actually wanted to bring you guys a quick thing that i came across in my reading and studying and crumbs all over my face anyway it's a it's a united states court of appeal in the ninth circuit now i'm going to give you the importance of different circuits and different cases um, it's going to be in the master class where I talk about the purpose of the circuits, blah, 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 um, and how to use that. Because again, it's also going to be something I'm going to talk about in weaponizing your defense. So just keep that in mind as we go along. But if you're not joined, go ahead and join, hit that hundred dollar tier. Let's go ahead and get it learning and get it going. There are a bunch of people that have signed up and we are getting it going. So don't be left behind. Let's keep going. Let's keep growing. But anyway, the case that I want to bring to you is um, Keshner Jr. versus Estorado Estranda. Now, the reason why this case to me is important and why I wanted to bring it to you is because there were certain parts of this that kind of resonated with me because it's something I speak about often. It's something that you guys ask me questions about often. And it's one of those things where it's one of I think it's worth talking about because it's something that I'm actually going to go deeper into on the podcast because it's one of those where you're probably going to be looking because I believe the the documents that I have is 45 pages long so you'll probably get a good taste of the, the shit my ramblings for the most part but Kushner sued the city of Melo Park and several of the police officers individually under 42 U.S.C. Um, 1983 for violations of his civil rights arising from a traffic stop and subsequent events. Now, oftentimes we hear that we're going to sue these guys in the um, under 42 U.S.C. 1983. That's in their individual capacity. Now, the reason or in their personal or official capacity. The reason why a lot of those are thrown out is because when you're suing someone under a um, 1983, it has to be something that is written down that they're following. Now, what happens is once they violate, it's not something that the state can permit. So a lot of times it's going to be something that is thrown out because they can't enforce what they're doing or they've done it wrong. And we know because of their training, they're not trained to do it the proper way. So... This is a lot, lot shaky. I'm using my hand, so didn't plan on doing this one. This one was kind of spurred a moment. But anyway, now, the reason why this was kind of intriguing to me is because we know a traffic stop itself is lawful for the most part. But then we also understand the officers have an opportunity to exercise. Like that? Exercise? Officer discretion. In this case, their discretion was to do things outside their official capacity. And in these cases, because of their individual lawsuits, because remember he sued in their individual capacity as well as in their official capacity. Now, the reason why I gave you a case a couple of days ago where I spoke about the difference between qualified immunity and absolute immunity. Go back and watch that. Well, the district court denied Estranda's qualified immunity for the traffic stop because construing the facts in plaintiff's favor, there was neither probable cause for the stop nor reasonable suspicion of illegal activity. But they said the stop itself was lawful because it doesn't deal with a crime because probable cause only comes from a crime. This is why they have an opportunity to exercise officer discretion now and the officer's determination that the plaintiff's windows were rolled up and tinted did not qualify as a reasonable mistake did not qualify as a reasonable mistake these are things why i say challenge every aspect of the stop because even a lawful stop uh even with this traffic citation or the traffic stop still has other aspects to it which make it something else so they still have procedures to follow to make it proper this is why you do challenge 
not only to stop, but when it comes to the officer's discretion, their choice ends up being the choice they have to live with. But it's up to you to enforce it. It's up to you to make them pretty much accountable. So that's what I got for right now. Just keep that in mind. You have to enforce it because just because the stop itself is lawful does not make everything that goes on within the stop a lawful act. And you can hold them accountable for not following law. So thank you guys. Keep supporting the podcast. 99 cents, $4.99, 999 or more. Shoot your boy a donation via Apple Pay. Love that because it's as simple as sending me a message and hitting pay. Now we go into grab your t-shirts. Hoodies will be out in the next couple weeks. And we will actually have more t-shirts. Lastly, grab a tier. First tier, second tier, third tier, or the master class. Let's go. Let's keep growing. And Supreme, you know what it is. Out. Out.